Okay, let's resume. So I repeat, you should be more advanced and more competent than your learner. Because if you are of the same ability, learning will not take place. Okay, another point by Lev Vygotsky. There should be challenging tasks, okay? There should be challenging tasks in, uh, in your classroom in order to promote maximum cognitive development. At pag sinabi natin challenging tasks, what we mean here is, is uh, the task which is one higher level than the ability of the learner. So kung marunong na siya ng addition, alam niya na ang concept ng addition, you move now to subtraction. Baka naman puro addition na lang tinuturo mo until the last uh, day of the school year. Okay? It's not challenging anymore. Natutunan na nila at naturo mo pa. So I repeat, in order to assess whether your task, your activity... Again? Question? Okay. In order to assess whether the tasks, the activities you are providing to your learners are challenging, assess it by their ability. Is it one level higher than their ability? Okay? Because it should be challenging. Okay, in order to promote cognitive development. Now, what do we mean by zone of proximal development or yung tin tinawag ni Lovdigotsky na CPD? What do we mean by that? Have you heard about this one, Miss uh, Ayla Charmaine? Zone of proximal development? Yes, so John Vincent Vaila. Good. Parang narinig niya na ang CPD. Uh, Ni-report na po namin kasi yan, sir, uh, Ay, yes. previously Ay, kay Ma'am. ulit ngayon dito. Magandang balita. <laughs> Parang mabawasan naman ang trabaho ko. Oh. Pag sinabi yung zone of proximal development po, dun po, dun po yung ano, stage na yung first, yung anong kaya ng student na sarili niya lang. Then yung okay. zone of proximal ability is this, kung anong kaya ng bata sa tulong ng adults or yung learners na expert doon. Then, yun po. Exactly. That's correct. Kaya nga proximal development. No? Yung kaya niya pag siya lang mag-isa, alamin mo yon. At yung kaya niya pang gawin kapag sinamahan mo na siya. Okay? That's what we call guided practice. Okay? This is uh, the uh, range of tasks. Okay? That we refer to range of tasks okay? that children can accomplish alone or okay, yung pangalawang step, katulong ka na. Okay? Ito yung tinatawag natin scaffolding. So, CPD in relation to scaffolding, it's the support, the help you give to your learner. Okay? Like, for instance, pag nagturo ka sa classroom, ano bang support ang binibigay natin? Are you going, yung pag-share ba natin, yun ang support? No. It, this refers to the materials you use, the curricular devices you use in order to support learning. Okay? That's what we mean by scaffold. This refers, I repeat, to the support or help you provide in order for learning to take place. Okay? So that's what we mean by zone of proximal development and scaffolding. And, and it's good to hear that you already discussed about this one because this is very important. Ako hanggang ngayon, hindi ko makalimunan itong Lev Vygotsky na to, no? And I'm still applying her, uh, his, um, his points, the points of Lev Vygotsky into teaching because I believe there's uh, learning when it comes to socialization. Okay, another Play allows children to cognitively stretch themselves. Okay, kaya nga sa elementary, di ba? Sa kinder, naglalaro. Because in playing, there is socialization. At pag sinabi niyo yung socialization, ang daming aspects niyan. Pwedeng mentally ang ma-develop, pwedeng emotion or social skills. Kung natatandaan niyo, nung bata kayo, ayan yung mga... Kahit wala pa kayo sa school, ha? Yung nakipaglaro lang kayo sa kaibigan niyo, ang dami niyong natutunan. Like, uh, the concept of trust. Okay, the concept of who to work with. Okay, the concept of pag nakipag-away ka, sino una makikipagbate? Yeah. Yung mga simpleng bagay sa mga gamit na nilalaro nyo, okay, you learn about that. Kung alin lang plastic, alin yung uh, lata. Okay? These are things we learn through socialization. That's why uh, playing for most children, pansinin nyo ha, sa mga activities ng bata, okay, elementary, grades 1 to 3, or kinder, madaming laro. Okay? Mahalas kadalasan niya, puro laro. Because, uh, at hindi sila naglalaro lang. They learn from that. It's planned. Okay, it's planned by the teacher. So, thank you, Mr. Baila, for the answer. Okay, may kaligtas na kang ngayon, hindi ngayon ni Mr. Baila. Yan ang ating kumbalo. Tapos yun na yung gamat ko. Okay, next. Uh, remember that Love Vygotsky's theory opposes the theory of developmental learning of Chan 
Piaget. Tandaan niya yan. Because John Piaget is more of a cognitivist. At pag sinabi natin social uh, constructivist theory, or referring to theories in relation to social factors, kinokontra niya, kabaligta rin niya ng cognitivist. Kasi ang cognitivist, sabi dyan, learning is already structured in the mind. It's already determined. Okay? We have the ability. Pero sabi naman ng uh, uh, theorist, the believers of uh, these social factors, learning will differ based on your social exposure. Okay? So, iba-ibang punto yan. Pare-pareho namang may punto. I'm saying that these theories, yung binanggit natin, di ba? Behaviorism, cognitivism, okay? social constructivism, may kanya-kanya silang point. Okay? Pero alam niyo naman ng mga expert, mahilig magbangayan. At from their bangayan, from their debate, we learn. Okay? And may pinag-aaralan tayo ngayon and we understand things based on their perspective. Okay, the general implications of Vygotsky's perspective. First, ano ba ang dapat gawin in order to apply this one? Uh, make sure that there is interaction with adults. So, nino, sino ang adults sa classroom? Ikaw, teacher. Okay? Pero dito, in this case, pwede naman mangyari sa college na ang, ang, ang teacher, hindi siya adult. I mean, adult siya pero mas younger, no? Tapos may adult learner ka. But in terms of experience, dun sa aspect na yun, kunyari, experience in teaching, mas maalam ka. So that's what we mean by adult here. The more experienced one. And it's not about the age. Okay? Na meron kasi yung mga matatanda na pero walang pinagkatandaan. Yung sinasabi nila, no? <laughs> meron din yung matatanda na, arang wala ka namang natutunan kahit kasama mo sina. Because it's not their expertise, okay? It depends on the expertise. Adult when it comes to experience, adult when it comes to expertise. That's what we mean. And then scaffolding, which we already discussed a while back. Next is participation, of course. Uh, you need to make your learners involved. Kaya nga tinatawag ko kayo isa-isa. Ayan na, baka sabihin nyo, hinuhula-hulaan ko lang, pinahihirapan ko. It's part of learning. Okay? That's why I'm calling you one by one. It's a way for, for you to realize the purpose of this session. Next, apprenticeship. What do we mean by apprenticeship? Yes. How uh, nervous na lawa. Miss Sabado. How do you understand the word apprenticeship? Pag apprentice ang tawag sa'yo, ano ka? Miss Elizabeth Sabado. Sir, bakit ako? Bakit parang kasalanan ko pa? Oh, sige, let's call another one. Miss Noren Manaban, how do you understand the word apprenticeship? Kasalanan to ni Elizabeth. Yes. Hello po, sir. Oh, yes, Noren. Para po siyang ano, ikaw po yung nagtitraining, sir. Okay, you are the apprentice, right? You are under the training of an expert. Yeah. Correct. Okay? At sa classroom daw, ang tawag dyan, cognitive apprenticeship. Kasi ang alam ni teacher, yun yung pinapasa niya. At tinuturingin mo na apprentice mo sila. Okay? Which is true. Kung anong personality mo, di ba? Kung anong alam mo, yun yung papasa mo. That's why, yung kasabihan na your learners will be a reflection of who you are as a teacher. Well, kapag malinis ang classroom, kunyari, yung simple paglilinis na lang ng classroom, syempre, Kaya malinis ang classroom kasi si teacher, strict siya when it comes to cleanliness. Okay? Kapag disiplinado ang mga bata, kunyari, uh, when it comes to following rules, kasi si teacher, uh, pinaalala niya that we should be strict when it comes to following rules. Okay? So that's what we mean by apprenticeship. And it, it's in relation with social uh, theory of learning. Okay? Kasi nga, apprenticeship, kaninong matutunan from, your, from the expert. Okay? From the adult one. Acquisition of teaching skills. Uh, this one, learning takes place by means of acquisition of teaching skills. What do we mean by this? Yes, uh, Miss Delphine. Po. Narinig niyo po, sir? Yes, I can hear you loud I... and clear. Kanina po po kasi ako nagsasalita. Hello po. Sir? Yes, you answer now. What do we mean by acquisition of teaching skills? Uh, yung pong mga ano, types of teaching strategies mo sa mga students. Okay. Ang bata to, ha? So if they already acquired Miss Delphine, 
this learning, sila mismo natuturo na nila, like yung sinabi mo, yung strategy mo, na-apply nila into their classmates. Like when, Apa. okay, if they want to teach their classmates, they will use the same teaching skills. Yung kapag nagtuturo na daw sila, kumbaga ang tawag sa kanila, no, uh, peer tutor, it means that they have learned from you. Okay? It's a sign kaya ay madalas sa inyo yung pinagtatanungan nyo, kanya kanyari after ng session na to, you want clarification. Yung mga kaklase na pinagtatanungan nyo at sinasagot kayo sa mga instructions na about the session, ayan, they already acquired the teaching skills by means of this session. And it's good. It's a sign of learning. Kaya palakpakan nyo sila. Magpasalamat kayo sa kanila, no? Uh, because uh, of their good listening skills, they were able to acquire this teaching skills. Okay? O assess yourself. Tinutiro, at tinakbang tiro ka rin kaklasiko. Tinakbang in-assist king uh, activity. Kung meron na, then congratulations. Meron ka na nito. Next, dynamic assessment through ayan, peer tutoring, cooperative learning, and group discussion. More on, I repeat, socialization. Like peer tutoring, you need to speak to the person. Okay, one-on-one -on -one yan, peer tutoring. Pag sinabi yung peer tutoring, by the way, nung kaklase mo, kapareho mo ng edad, you are of the same group. Okay? At nangyayari naman, especially in college and in high school, you teach each other. Okay? Parang group activity, um, group study, yun yung sinasabi. Okay? Group study. Cooperative learning and group discussion. So, ang groupings pala, it's because of this social constructivism. Okay? That's the basis. That's the core. That's the anchor. Okay, next. We move now to the situated learning theory, still in relation to the social uh, dimensions of learning. So this exemplifies the view that learning is a product of cultural context where one lives or exists. Situated cognition or situated learning means that learning occurs naturally through social activities, contexts, and cultures which learners are exposed to. So ang point naman dito is that when we provide activities, it should be situated or contextualized. Um, when we say contextualized, it's a replication of real-life situation. Ayun. Kaya yun, yun, yun yung point niya, situated uh, cognition or situated learning. It is uh, providing activities that are somewhat like a simulation of real life. Kaya nga nabanggit dito, occurs, learning occurs naturally through social activities, context, and cultures. Okay? L like, in, in outside the school, diba? we learn a lot from our society. We learn a lot outside the school kasi ito yung totoong buhay. That's why we need to learn a lot. We are exposed to this real life. Bakit yung ibang lesson sa loob ng classroom, ang hirap na hirap tayong tandaan. Pero yung mga nanararansan natin sa labas, the, the things that we experience outside the school, napakadali nating tandaan. It's because these things or activities refer to real life. At minsan, nagkakamali si teacher dun sa loob ng classroom, hindi niya tinuturo kung paano gamitin niya sa totoong buhay. Or, you are not providing activities that are not simulations of simulation of real life. Kaya nga sa math, lagi kong binabanggit, hindi lang 1 plus 1 ang example ni teacher. Pag nagbigay siya ng problem, ng equation, paano gagamitin niya sa palengke? Paano gagamitin niya sa GP? Okay? Like for sine, cosine, di ba? Ang, ang measurement dyan, yung, kung nga rin, building. If you're going to... to, to Measure the hypotenuse. Gusto ko ba panya biyan? Rose ni, na yung concept ng math. Kung yari at yung shadow, i-measure day yan. It relates to engineering. Okay? Real life ang examples mo. Hindi lang, etang kabudla, may drawing triangle. Nani yung triangle, wari king life. Nung ka rin lang, gamit din. Ayan, yung building, of course. May triangle ang building sa side. Ang daming triangle ng buhay. At yung love triangle, di ba? O, makalano pa kong life. Okay, next. That's again situated learning theory. Now, what's the point of situated learning theory? By the way, this is the notable proponent of this theory. We have John Love. Okay. First, okay, it says here that knowing, learning, and cognition are seen in actions of people and people interacting. Again, about interaction that you learn, you know, uh, you recognize about things based on the way you act and interact. It's about act and interact. Point it out. Okay? Situated learning, you act and interact. That's the formula to learning. O, syempre, pag yakalulwal balay, nga ba balo mo mo? Yung kimbali, you learn about the house, everything in the house. Kung sino lang nakakasalamuha mo doon. Pero pag lumabas ka, 
you learn about the outside, the people outside, the culture outside, okay? The more when you talk, Okay, you interact, you inter, um, exchange of ideas, okay? Next, construction of meaning is tied to specific purposes and context. Yes, okay? The way we construct meaning is dependent on the environment you are in. Kaya nga, pag sinabing bahay, kunyari, pag si Rose din ang tinanong ko, anong bahay? Meron siyang imagination sa isip niya ng bahay, sariling vision niya ng bahay. Pero, pag tinanong ko naman si... Uh, Elizabeth, kung anong bahay, meron din siya ang sariling vision ng bahay kasi may magkakaiba sila ng experiences but they know the concept of house. Okay? Alam natin na pare-pareho ang konsepto ng bahay, tinitirhan. Pero pag visualize natin sa isip yan, iba-ibang naisip natin na uri ng bahay. Am I correct, Miss Mercado? Miss Camille Mercado, pag sinabi kong bahay, anong naisip mo? Anong na-visualize mo sa, sa isip mo? Yes, Miss Camille. Oh, sir, um, yung so, well, video chef. Ay nong video yung masabah. Yung po yung ano, sir. I mean yung itsura. The the how how does it look like? Pag sinabi ng bahay, ano yung naiimagine mo? Parang ano, sir? Yung sakto lang na sakto lang na bahay. Okay. At yung bahay na yan, yung bahay na nakita mo na, correct? At na visualize mo. Yeah. Exactly. So, either sa picture or sa totoong buhay. The same way that I will comprehend in that house based on my experiences. So I repeat, construction of meaning is tied to specific purposes and context. So we develop our own meaning depending on the purpose and context. Next, learning is viewed as dependent and inseparable from its context. And that's true. Kaya nga social um, dimension to. Na, uh, this uh, theory relates to social factor. We create meaning based on the context, based on the setting we are in. Okay? Okay, more on this uh, situated learning theory. Learning is situated with authentic activity. At nabanggit na natin kung anong authentic kanina. Okay? Mga totoo na nangyayari. Kunyari, uh, kunyari parang uh, ironic, no? Authentic tapos kunyari. For example, um, if you are going to teach about uh, oral communication, saan nila magagamit ang skills nila in oral communication? By means of answering phone. Ayan. Authentic activity yon. Paano nga ba ang tamang pagsagot sa phone? How do we respond to calls? O kaya through chat, using email. How do we respond using email? Okay? It's situated also in the context and culture. So remember that when we give activity, consider the authenticity. Nakatotohanan ba siya? Consider the setup, okay, the context, and the culture. Okay. Because if it's a replication of real life, mas malaking chances na matutunan nila. Next, situated cognition is a way of naming the kind that takes place in and through common practices among a group of people with similar goals and interests. So that's what we mean by similar cognition, like uh, situated cognition. Like what I've said, it's dependent on our experiences. It de it's dependent on the context that we are in and the culture that we have been. Okay, next. Okay. Um, another point. Learning is in part about increased participation and that is legitimate to participate in different ways. So the more you participate, Point here is, the more you learn. Okay? And that's true. Mas marami activities ang sinalihan mo, mas marami kang matututunan. Mas maraming uh, experiences ang nagather mo, mas marami kang matututunan. More people that you meet, the more that you will learn. Okay? That's true. Next, cultural models are not held by individuals, but live in practices of community. So it's not... Uh, uh, determined by individuals. It is created by, by the way we interact, okay? by the way we live in terms of the practices that we see in a community. Kaya nga bawat community may kanya-kanyang culture na nade-develop. Okay? E, ang example na lang sa mga barrio. Uh, bawat community sa barrio may kanya-kanyang kultura yan. Meron yung mga chismosa sa isang community at talaga nasa harap ng tindahan. Meron naman sa isang community dahil mas social sila, no? through chat ang chismisa, na, through Facebook or through phone. So, pwede ganun. It, it differs uh, from person to person. Like for agriculture naman. 
iba't ibang practices din yan. Ang pagtatanim sa bawat lugar. May kanya-kanya silang uh, paraan na sinusunod. That's what we mean by here. It's the way we leave these practices in a community. Oh, sa mga schools, sa mga teachers, bawat skwelahan may kanya-kanyang kultura. Okay. Learning is grounded in the actions of everyday situations. And that's true. Okay. Hindi na kailang ipaliwan again. That's the situated learning theory. Knowledge undergoes construction and transformation through continuous use. Oh, correct. Dating alam lang natin, addition. O ngayon, natang math major, even you, all of you, may mga pa-spirit, spirit na kayo. It's a product of what you have learned. And it transforms as you gain experience, as you expose your, as yourselves into different activities. Na kapag huminto ka in exposing yourself into different activities, it stops to. Okay? Kung baga, nagiging stagnant siya. Kaya nga ang teacher laging ina-advise, mag-aral lang, mag-aral. Okay, so it will not be stagnant. You need to continuously transform your ability. When it comes to learning, ayan, from read 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what we do, the implication here is that we provide uh, varying activities depending on the grade level. Kasi nga, we want learning to take place. Okay, we're now on chapter 2. Oh, I will explain you. Uh, it's about social interactions, interpersonal relations, and communication in the learning process. But before we proceed, uh, would you like to raise some questions, if you have any question? So we just defined some terms in relation to the developmental and sociocultural dimensions of learning. We discussed about social constructivist view of learning and the situated learning theory. So before we proceed, I'm giving you the opportunity to ask questions. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, voila. So I assume that you understand the topic. Next, let's move to chapter two, or lesson number two. That's uh, about social interaction, interpersonal relation, and communication in the learning process, still in relation to uh, the social aspect of learning. Okay, nandun pa rin tayo. So when you say social interaction, it refers to the exchange between two or more individuals, of course. Okay? Hindi naman interaction ang tawag sa pakipag-usap sa sarili. No? But it, there should be two or more individuals. So types of interaction according to Irving Goffman. Exchange, competition, cooperation, conflict, and coercion. So this uh, four will be your task. Okay? I want you to research on this and understand these concepts dahil limitado lang yung oras natin. Uh, Irving Goffman, uh, classification of interaction. Exchange, competition, cooperation, conflict, and coercion. This will be part of your quiz next week. I will give the sample, um, I mean the sample situation. All you have to do is to classify them. What type of interaction is that? Okay, at alin dyan yung magandang type of interaction? Definitely itong dulo, no? coercion, yung pinilit mo. Parang yung bata lang na tinakot mo para gawin yung isang bagay. Like uh, to do something, it, to write his or her name. Pag hindi mo ginawa yan, len mo man. Okay? That's coercion. And that's a type of interaction. Okay? Interaction may have positive or negative consequences. So not all interactions may be positive or I uh, may are positive. It could be negative or positive. Katulad nung sa coercion, yung pinilit. Okay? It may have negative consequences. Nanatakot lang siya, kaya siya sumunod. Okay? Or you might be teaching about corruption. Dahil tinakot mo, oh, black meaning na yun. You are already, already black meaning. Pag hindi mo ginawa to, ganito. Hmm. That's already a black meaning, di ba? We are already teaching that concept. So it could be positive or negative. So ang lesson dito, um, when asking your learners to interact, assess the type of activity. Will this activity teach positive or negative consequences? Okay, next, interpersonal relation. Uh, since socialization na pinag natin, it's a bond or close association that exists between two or more people who share common goals. So these are the different types of interpersonal relation. It could be friendship, it could be love, it could be platonic relationship, family relationship, or work relationship. So this relationship also affects or influence the way we learn things. Okay? Kapag meron sinabing isang tao na hindi mo kilala, my question is, Paniniwalaan mo ba agad? Yes, uh, Miss Maraya. Sir. 
If a stranger sa- talk to you about something, paniniwalaan mo ba agad, Miss Maraya? O merong duda? Meron duda. Okay, magkakaroon ng duda. That's what we mean, no? The type of relationship determines whether you will accept the information or not. Katulad ngayon, I am your teacher. Siyempre, la ko kakarapat teaching situation tamo. May akong sasa... Maniwala kayo, di ba, Jenny? Diyang mamay sanda na ka, Jenny. Maniwala ka pa rin, correct? Oh, just kidding. Okay, of course, you will believe your teacher kasi kung alin sinabi niya, yun yung gagawin mo. Kasi nga, teacher siya. No? Parang manggulang lang, kapag sinabi ng nanay-tatay, lalo rin ang tatay, kailangan sumunod. Di ba? Pero nung yung friend mo mo, inutos na ka mo kunyari, nga, eh, naka, eh, may man kilala, eh, may mga friend, maminto ka, of course not. Okay? So again, that's what we mean by interpersonal relation. Next is um, communication. I, you can see my screen. Okay. Communication. This refers to the exchange in meanings between individuals through a common system of symbols, signs, and behavior. So communication is not only about language. Okay. Kahit yung mga road signs, kasama yan. Okay. The way we act. Nakapag, uh, let's say for instance, si Jenny, makapangalumbaba na yung kabang makiramdam ka ako. How would I assess that? Yes, Jenny. Kunyari makiramdam yung anak yaka makapangalumbaba na kaya ba't piyak piyak niya? How would you assess that? Naantok na po. So. Okay. Inaantok na. Kailangan, baka kailangan ng itulog yan at ihiga yan, no? That's what we mean. Um, communication. And again, this is social dimension of learning. Therefore, communication is very relevant. Now, what's the implication now? The symbols, the signs, and the behavior we expose our learners should be assessed by the teacher. Okay? Katulad na ang pinagdidikit natin sa kung saan sa ang wall. Ayan. Kahit na nakadikit ang dyan, dahil nakikita yan araw-araw ng bata, they still learn from it. Okay? So be careful with what we post. Lalo na sa Facebook. Diba? Ang daming post, ang dami na nilang alam gawin. It's because of Facebook. They are exposed to this social media site na ang dami-daming pakulo. Kaya ang dali-dali nilang matutunan because they, it's just within their grasp. Tignan lang yung phone, they would learn about it. Diba? So that's what we mean by communication. Okay, the social-emotional climate in the classroom brought about by the kind of social interactions and relationships existing therein should be one where students experience social acceptance. Kapag ang bata, hindi tanggap. Okay, pinaparamdam mo sa kanya na lagi siyang mali, na outcast siya, lalayo yung loob niya, hindi siya magtitiwala, and therefore, learning will not take place. Again, first role of teacher, since this is a, 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 a mini-society, The classroom is a mini society. You make your learners feel accepted. Kasi pag merong takot na yan, yung ayaw niya niya pumasok, hindi na siya makikinig sa'yo kasi lagi mo siyang pinapagalitan. Make first your learners feel that they are accepted. If they are not accepted, they will not participate. Siyempre, at makiyabi ka pa, nakaman uh, tanggap na, you feel that you are an outcast. Parang binabali, wala ka lang lagi ang pinapagalitan. Okay, at least man lang kahit sa bahay kung pinapagalitan siya, at least man sa eskwelahan, no? Ikaw na teacher, pinuri mo siya, nakaramdam siya ng puri. Doon mag-uumpisa yan. Yung tinatawag na doon mo mabubus yung confidence, no? But reverse psychology. Okay. Children's relationship with uh, their parents, peers, and friends have the me- tremendous impact in their lives. At di na natin ito kailangan i-expound. But this is very true. Okay. Kaya nga sabi nila, if you have a good family, if you have good friends, if you have good parents and good peers, parang ang buhay mo is that you learn positively about life. You learn positively about things. Okay? Kaya um, consider nyo rin, pag nagtuturo kayo, tignan nyo yung family background nila. Baka may problema sa bahay, kaya ganito ang nangyayari sa eskwela. Okay? That's the point. Consider the social factors uh, in their home, outside na pinagkipilitan mo at tinawag mong B.O.B.O. ang bata, yung pala just to find out that this child is really struggling at a very young age because of a broken uh, family, for instance. Kaya bangayin ang bangayin ng magulang nila sa bahay or siya lang mag sa bahay. Nobody will guide the, the child. Okay? So it's very important that we get to know our learners. Okay, what to do as a teacher? Ito ngayon ang tanong. The teacher asked a learner to stand and answer a question, but the learner failed to answer. So this is social aspect, no? Really, uh, you are now applying what we have learned. Ano ngayon ang gagawin mo? 
Yes. Sino kaya ang mapalad na sa asagot? Miss Florida Blanca. Pino Florida Blanca. Hindi siya nakasagot. O oh, mali yung sagot niya. Fail to answer. What will you do now, Dina? Ay mo, sir. Ali ko masyadong pa-feel kaya na parang mas... Ah, anong exactong aline? sasabihin mo? Sige, kunyari ako yung nagka... Sorry, ma'am, I don't know the answer. Tapos, wala, sir. Para ka na... Mag-kai ko mo, sir. Mag-okay. Tapos, um, parang ako na rin mag-explain. Tang... Basta okay. pa-feel ko mo kaya na Aliya... Alina, Aliya, ba'no ba ita? Hina, hindi. Kasalanan so, na magkamali. Oh, uh, papas okay. parang okay lang makantita okay, sir. Okay, correct. And that's if you build that kind of environment, they will not be afraid to ask questions. They will not be afraid to commit mistakes. Okay, you're correct, Miss Dino. No, um, make them feel it's okay to commit mistake. Pero yung paulit ulit naman na mali, ano? Sa araw-araw na tinanong mo yung parehong tano, sang school year nang nalilip, iba ibang kaso na yon. Okay, at depende din sa pagkakamali. Okay. Hindi lahat ng pagkakamali pwedeng sabihin na okay. There are, uh, there are uh, mistakes that needs immediate correction. Or that need immediate correction. And we have different types of cor correction technique. Iba't ibang paraan yan. Pwedeng peer correction, pwedeng teacher's correction, pwedeng siya mismo yung, yung magkocorrect sa sarili niya through your questions. So identify the personality of the child. Alamin niya yung personality niya kung ano yung akma, uh, the proper way to correct the child. Oh, pwede namang, okay, thank you for your answer. Okay, thank you for your, your, your opinion. So let's have another opinion. Uh, hindi mo sinabing mali siya, pero nung sumagot ito, sinabi mo na tama. Uh, that's correct. Your opinion is, siguro naman marirealize na niya. No? Or, meron din naman mga bata na gusto yung direct correction. I think we missed some parts in your answer. You need to add about this one. Parang a form of suggestion siya. Diba? Hindi siya, ay mali ka, lok-lok ka, lakang balo, lok-lok ka. Huwag ganun. Parang katapusan na nang alak niya, alam na yung chance mabiyas. Okay? So know the personality of the child. You are correct. Next, the teacher notices that Paul was shy and would not want to answer the teacher's question nor participate in class activities. What to do now? Na-apply na natin ang social factor, ha? So situated learning theory and the dis social constructivism. Yes, uh, Mark Leo. Mark Leo, eh, bisang manyalita yung anak ng gawa. Sir. Tuturo na ka. Paul yan niya. Baka, uh, leave po, sir. What will you do? Uh, uh, Dinamihan mo pong maya pa oras para manyalita yan. Kasi yung yung maya pa oras yan. yan. Pabandwa, pabulan, parmingo. <laughs> Alina, mga one week, sir. Kasi baka shy mo king environment. Uh, But, okay, correct. Yan. Do not force, ne? Give time. Give ample time for the child, okay? But make sure na may yaring school year na may nyanita. Yan na dimdam may bosses. Alin naman pang peboran mo niya ang peboran, you give consideration. Ibang consideration na yan. Again, your work, your task is to make them learn. And how will they learn? They need to speak. Okay? But you're correct, Leo. Give them ample time. Little by little. Kung nung one word yung kanyang yun na yes or no, kain ko tang mo. O, kaya rin ang yes or no, one month na yung nag yes or no, ito ang praises na yung sasagot na. Ang laki nga buo na yung sentence. Alam ko manong yung paminyalitan. <laughs> okay. O, sasaya na kayo, tsaka na king dulin. Eh. So it's time for you to reflect on the content of the self-paced learning module. But while you are reflecting, I, I am allowing you already to um, indicate your answer. Okay? So the questions are in your module, plus they are also posted in MS Teams. Now, ngayon, anong gagawin? Igugroup po kayo based on your attendance. Okay, group number one, ang tinimo ka simply, para tayo na magkasakit na, one to four on the attendance. Okay, group number two, five to eight. Group number three, nine to twelve. Group number four, Number 13 to 16. Group number 5, number 17 to 20. Gusto ko ba pa nga, ah? May makabobo na tayong matay nila. Again, group number 1, 1 to 4. So, Chico, Fermin, Salonga, Pangan. Group number 2, Lingad, Santos, Pagio, Mercado. That's until number 8. Group number 3, um, Unanan, Mercado, Manabat, Mendoza. Group number 4, Montemayor, Sarmiento, Maranan, Layo. Group number five, Maraya, Delphine, Manabat, Gabino. 
Group number six, Baila, Panganiban, Satiko, Santiago. That's until number 24. Group number seven, Cubaco, Buwan, Medina, Mamangon. Okay? And then group number, itang tutukin, ano ng number? We have Paule, Virgo, Divina Gracia, and Cabansag. And then next, we have Beltran, Kiambao, Ocampo, and Paul. And last group, we have Lozano. Ay, sorry, sorry. Last group, we have Lozano, Puno, Rojas, and Sabado. Miss Tungol, join group number one. Uh, pang number 41. Okay, question? Okay, syempre, ako bisa mangutang na po ito. May pakaba pa yung discussion. Okay, that's all for today. If you don't have a question, work now on your module and the group activity.